Glory to God. Well, as they're greeting, we're going to continue dealing with our series on the remedy. But I want to share something with everyone, even as we just begin to take our seats and we can move forward. One of the things I want to share that um, I was just in prayer about something this morning, praying out some things. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited because of what God is doing. Personally, what he's doing in me, uh, what he's doing in my family, what he's doing in his ministry. I'm expecting the end of 2022 and all of 2023 to be the best years of your life. Now, watch this. As you begin to see God, as you make him priority, as you make him priority, as you seek him, as you develop yourself spiritually, See, the best time you're going to have is as you're developing yourself spiritually and as you develop yourself uh, existentially in any area of your life, you got to make a decision. This is going to be the best year of my life. Now, watch this. Situations can come up. Stuff can happen. But you and I have to make a decision whether we're going to allow that to cause us to be down or whether we're going to say, wait a minute, I'm going to rise above spiritual turbulence and say, I choose to go above, and I'm making a decision. So whatever decisions you're going to have to make this upcoming year, things you've been wrestling with, things that you like you've been praying about and keeping before God, I pray, and I'm in agreement with you, that you're going to have peace, things are going to be settled, you're going to have clear direction, and that you're going to accomplish and achieve everything God has called for you to do. Now, I want to go real quick to the book of Numbers, um, real quick. Now, this, is, this really wasn't a part of my message, but as I was just out praying, I just jumped in my car and just went out driving. And um, I want to say Numbers 13. Is it 13? Help me hold the ghost. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is when Caleb and Joshua, remember, they had gone into to spy out the land, um, and it was 12 spies that went out to spy out the land. Um, and they came back, and two of them had a good report, two, and then the 10 had the negative report. And as I was sitting and praying, let me, let me, let me share this, and then I'll share what happened. I'm going to go to verse 30. Um, now, watch this. I'm going to go up to verse 20, 28. And one of the things that one of the people with the negative report said, it says, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Now, this is what I want you to focus and lock in on. This is verse 30, Numbers 13, verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses. In other words, the people were complaining about how big the opposition was in the land that God had promised them. In other words, I like to, let me go ahead and bring it down to more modern vernacular. Caleb told everybody, everybody shut up. Y'all talking too much. Be quiet. Be still. Stop talking negative. Because that's a normal tendency when stuff is going wrong and you see something that seems to be above your natural ability to handle it. It's to go and look in your own strength to say, okay, yeah, it, it, it may not be possible for you, but with God, all things are possible to him that believe it. God is saying, I'm not looking for you to turn it around. I'm just looking for you to believe me to turn it around. You hear me? He says... I, I just need you to believe. And Caleb said it like this. And this is the statement that I begin to hear. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. In other words, let us go up at once and possess it. Let's not mess around. Let's not give ourselves time to talk ourselves out of what it is we believe in for. And he said it like this. Let us go up at once and possess it. Why? for we are well able to overcome it. And that's all I begin to hear as I was praying and asking God, God, what are you leading me to do? I was praying about the ministry, praying about things. It was something that I believe he showed me, but I wanted to pray it out to make sure it was God and not just me thinking it up. But all I kept hearing in my spirit was, and I, I want to make a little more hood, we be well able. 
We, be, we are well able to possess and to overcome what it is God has told us to do. And so not only is that, you're going to have to say in your own circumstance, in your own situation, in your own home, we be well able. Whatever is going to happen, watch this, in the midst of anything that happens, you're going to have to learn how to give God glory. He said, in everything, give thanks. He didn't say for everything, give thanks. But even in the midst of it, Father, I thank you for wisdom. I thank you that I'm at peace. I thank you that I'm in my sound mind. I thank you for wisdom to show me how to navigate this situation. And you better be ready. Because when you begin to praise and to thank God, one of the things that praise and thanksgiving does, it stops Satan in his tracks, y'all. I'm telling you. The Bible even says that the earth shall yield forth her increase when we praise God. So you ought to be expecting a level of increase to happen in your life, whatever it is you're dealing with. I know we got different situations that's going on, whether it be personal, financial, relational, in your mind, in your body, no matter what it is, God, you got me. You got me in this thing. All is well. I want, I want you to say this after me. Say, it is well. It is well. You're going to have to say, it don't feel well, Pastor. I know. But you're going to have to start speaking to your emotions and settle yourself down and say, it is well with me. It is well with my family. It's well with my mind. It's well with my body. It's well in my marriage. It's well with my children. It is well. I don't care in your career. God might be ruffling some feathers. He getting ready to shift you into something you didn't even realize that was greater than what you have currently. I thought I'd get more amens and out of that. But I'm telling you, you better get ready for a shift. Now, let's do this. I like this. We be well able. 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 We are well able. We are well able. Okay. Before you see it turn around on the outside, it has to be turned around on the inside for you. God, before he sets order out here, he going to set order in here. And you going to have to, the first thing you will have to do is get on your face before God. Because, listen, I done counsel folk for years. I've been in this for a minute. I'll be celebrating 25 years in spirit-filled ministry. One of the things I've seen is no matter what counsel you give to people, no matter what thing, until they ready, until they make it up in their mind, they're going to believe God. Until they say, wait a minute, all this stuff I done learned, I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to take it off the pages and put it into work consistently in my life. Not try God. I'll try it. No, I'm going to do it. Because you got to get settled that it's the word of God. This is why before you pursue, David asked this question. After he went through the battle, he came back, everything was gone. And he asked God, shall I pursue? He needed to get the will of God about the situation first. Because the will of God is going to be the anchor to your soul. Hear me when I tell you this. When you find out the will of God, and you know it's God's will for you to move into a certain direction, even when contradictory evidence shows up, when stuff happens that contradicts what you believe you got from God, the word is going to anchor you. What does an anchor do for a ship? It keeps it in position even as the waves are moving because even the natural current of water will cause a boat to drift off the sea. It ain't got to be a storm. It's just the natural order and current of the water that'll cause it to drift if it's not anchored. 
You got to be anchored in God. You can't be back and forth. One minute you're seeking them, next minute you ain't. One minute you're serving them, next minute you ain't. If you double-minded, your life's going to be unstable. I got to speak it to you. You got to be stable. I remember my wife and I, even as we, we've been married, it'll be 24 years this year, December 19, 24 years. And one of the things we had to, we had to decide was, and I knew within me, and there, sometimes the thought of divorce popped in our mind. But we had to make a decision. And for me, divorce wasn't an option. Now, in relationships, it's twofold. It's two ways. You got to have both people willing to be involved in the process. You See, when you talk about the human will, that's the only thing. Because God will make you do what you don't want to do. But what you can do is pray for a person and pray that the eyes of their understanding will be in light. For them to see what God needs to show them to move forward together. And as husbands and wives together, oh, well, I'm dealing with this, right? Well, I, I just go ahead and flow with this. Until you make the decision, I'm believing God. So God, whatever I got to do, guide me, lead me. But what if the other person don't want it, Lord? The scripture says, if the person does not have a desire to stay with you, let them go. And you are not held in condemnation and bondage. I'm going to have to deal with um, marriage, divorce, and remarriage. I'm going to have to deal with that. And just understanding that when you, listen, you're going to have to learn. And watch this, and you will be just fine. I done seen it from all over. I got I to gotta share it. I got to share it. Oh, I'm not sharing. Okay. I, am I on the right track somewhere? I don't know if I, if I am or not. Oh, good. All right. All right. You're going to have to know that you are not held under bondage. God loves you. God will heal you. God will restore you. And then at the right time, if you desire to be married again, he'll connect you to the right person. But for those that are believing for transformation in your home, let me deal for men. Number one, it got to start with us. God called us the head. We didn't call ourselves that. He called us that. So everything starts with the head. Our wives are built as receivers and multipliers. You give her sperm, she receives it, cultivates it, multiplies it, and gives you a baby. You give her groceries, she receives it, cultivates it, multiplies it, and gives you a meal. You give her a house, she'll receive it, cultivate it, multiply it, and give you a home. But if you give her aggravation and grief, she'll receive it, cultivate it, multiply it, and give you back. So if you don't like what you're receiving, you need to change what you're sowing and what you're giving. But she ain't acting right. Well, why don't you act right and be the example? When you stay in the love of God, it forces God to come on and work on your behalf. See, some of you need to learn how to walk in the supernatural. When you begin to say, okay, God, how come? Well, I'm mad because she ain't doing this and she ain't doing that. And the first thing God did with me about what you doing? Did not, ain't you the one that teach on authority with your words? Why don't you change it by speaking something different? Okay, all right. I don't know about y'all. Whenever I go to God in prayer, he start talking to me about me first. Then he start dealing with other stuff. What are you doing? Have you even created an atmosphere? Knowing how women are versus how men are. We just walk in the room and we ready. They don't function like that. They need an environment. They need an atmosphere that's different, that's conducive. And for us, ooh, I'm about to, ooh, no, I got the babies in here, so I can't say what I want to say. All right, so I can't say that yet. Don't worry, we got children's church coming. We got children's church coming. So we can, I, can, I can deal with some stuff. <laughs> I 
I'll say it like this. When you make the resolve to believe God, the strength of God will go into operation for you and assist you in your supernatural turnaround. We used to make, uh, we need to get back to it more consistent in the services when we make our favor confession. And part of our favor confession is that we have supernatural, what's it, um, supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs. Part of it is a supernatural turnaround is not always an instantaneous turnaround. It's the, it's the power of God that goes into effect to help your situation manifest. But also, it's the strength of God, the might of God in your inward man that sustains you through the turnaround situation. So that even though it doesn't look like it instantly turns around, there, there is a resolve and faith sees the end from the beginning. And now Jesus being the author and the finisher of our faith, he'll strengthen you to say, wait a minute, even though I know it don't look right, just stand your ground, it's going to turn around before you even know. Watch this. And this is what happened. Thank you, Lord. You're going to get so focused on the promise that the process is going to be easier for you now. Let me, let me, let me, let me. You're going to be so focused on the fact that God promised it to you that when he starts telling you to do stuff, you're going to be strengthened to get the job done. You're believing for something, he gives you instruction. You're believing for this, and he tells you to do that. You're believing for this, and God starts telling you to set order. What was that word again, Lord? Come on, Holy Spirit. He says this, when you begin to set order, it sets up for the supernatural to go at work. When you start setting order, that's why I said you got to deal with you first. When you set order in your mind, when you set order in your life, when you set order to say, God, I'm going to seek you first before I do anything else. I'm going to get my spiritual food for the day. I'm going to get my assignment for this day because I realize my success is built off my daily agenda. What is it that I'm doing seeking you day by day? I'm going to get up. I'm going to speak what I want to see. I'm going to be consistent. God says you got to be intentional this year. You're, there is going to be intentional building that takes place this year. God's going to give you system strategies and structures to assist you and to help you. Watch this. When you get up, you ain't going to be able to go back to sleep when he wake you up at certain times because he said, I need you to get up and pray now. You need to be active. See, you better hear me. See, it's, see oh, Lord, let me, let me help you. I don't, God, why am I dealing with he says this. He says, watch this. You need to go at war in spiritual warfare. While everybody else sleep, you war on behalf of your household and your family. You take authority over that devil that's been operating through people around you. And sometimes, listen, because you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Listen, your spouse ain't the issue. Your co-worker ain't the issue. That atmosphere, listen, that ain't the issue. Satan has been the one that's been plotting against you all this time because he knows what frustrates you. He knows what gets you off course. He knows what will fluster you. And he says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do the same thing. If you look at your life, if you look at seasons in your life, you will see that Satan has even come at you in seasons and ways. He knows when you're, when you're at your weakest. He knows when he hits you. Yeah, you'll go to a service, you'll go to a conference, and you'll get fired up. And the minute you come out, somebody got an attitude. Something happens that tries to get out of you what was just placed in you. Okay, do I have word for this? Yep. The scripture talks about in the book of Matthew that when the word of God is sown into an individual and they understand it not, then cometh the wicked one to steal that word that was sown. So don't let them rob you of it. Don't let them rob you. Just do this as an act of faith, whether you're virtual, whether you're here in person. Put your hand on your heart real quick and say, in the name of Jesus, I make a commitment to guard my heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. All right. Okay. All right. I did not intend to go there, uh, but all right. I got to say this before I keep on, before I move on. This is why you need to make sure that you stay built up in the spirit. When you stay built up in the spirit, your spirit sustains you in the day of adversity. 
it's hard for you to get off when you're full of joy. It's hard. Listen, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's not my joy. It's his joy. Jesus said it like this. These things have I spoken to you that my joy might be in you and remain in you. So joy, my pastor said like this, joy comes from what you know. If I know what God's word says and I know it's true, I keep joy. Knowing that even though it may not look like anything is happening. God's word says the moment that I spoke it, something went into operation. But now you got to stay consistent and on track and not get off of just because the pain hit don't mean you ain't healed. The Bible already says that by his stripes you are healed. Thank you. Man, Holy Ghost, you a bad boy. I love him. He, got, he shifted me right into the message. See, this is where your healing comes from. Not just physical healing, but even emotional healing. This is going to be, oh, I'm going to say it. Because sometimes I, I, I would hold back in the past, in some cases, no, I used to say it then when people would say, well, you said it's going to be my best year, this is my worst year. Well, that's on you. My job is just to deliver the word. You got to believe it and receive it and put it in operation. It ain't my fault you didn't guard your heart. It ain't my fault you ain't do the rest of what I taught you to do. How dare you? It's almost like you blaming God because of your situation. You the one that screwed up. Just admit it. Quit it and set up an accountability system and say from this moment forward, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay the course and I'm going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I make a, res listen, I make a resolve. I don't care what show up and say, now I want you to hear me. You won't defeat me this year. I'm speaking it into you. Oh, yeah, I hear that. Oh, okay. He said, what I'm doing is I'm snatching you out of this thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Lord Jesus. You better hear me. I'm talking about the poor. Yeah, Elder May got it. You know this? Yeah. It's going to come so strong. Some of you, you trying to get out the will of God, and he keep pulling you. He said, you ain't going nowhere. You want to know why? Because he knows in your heart you really want to do it, but you've been struggling because of just weakness. Because you need to be built up and developed. So you need to get around strong folk that's going to keep you strengthened and encouraged. Oh, I'm built for this, baby. This, listen, this, this, this is why I was created. This is me. I'm built. Listen. I used to get frustrated. I said, I'm built to deal with knuckleheads. I said, listen, I can work with them. I said, come on, what you doing? Come on, let's go. You gonna believe God, you gonna sit there and cry. You done cried long enough, you done got upset long enough, get your tail up. I done said that to myself. I done cried about stuff, and I said, what the heck are you doing? Remember who you are. Speak life. Do you know how powerful the word of God is? How powerful the word on your tongue is? That you can change and rearrange anything. Is there anything too hard for God? Ooh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Mm, I, uh, I'm trying to stay in the camera. Um, I feel like I'm ready to take off already because I see what I'm getting ready to say. If in the beginning he spoke, in your beginning, you need to speak because you're a creative spirit created just like your father. And whatever he wanted to speak, he got the image first and then released it out of his mouth and created what he saw. What are you seeing? See, if Satan can mess with your vision, he can mess with your construction. Some of y'all just missed that. You don't see what you need to build. That's why you ain't building it. If you can see it, get the image of what you believe in for. And then speak in correspondence to what you see. And faith without works is dead. Because when you speak, when you speak it, 
Watch this. He says, it is already established, and I'll lighten up your pathway and show you how to do it. It's, a simple, it's simpler than you think. Building is intentional. And I heard, I, was, I just might as well go on release. I'm trying to hold stuff. It's like, oh, Lord, I'm trying. I thought that might have been just for me or for later. And I heard this other statement, build according to pattern. What's the pattern that you see? Sometimes you can't build because you ain't got a model to build from. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Do you see it turning around? Can you see it turning around? Let's deal with that first, because I can give you instruction after instruction, and ain't nothing going to happen if you can't see it. Okay. I don't know if I'm speaking to everybody or something. I don't know. Okay, cool. Y'all done come and turn around my whole dog on message today. Because you're going to have to be healed. You're going to have to know the difference between being scared and scarred. You're afraid because you've been hurt. And because it didn't work out the way you thought it would the last time, and God is still speaking to you this time, it's been holding you back because you still scar. And listen, a scar is different than a wound. A scar really is definition of healing that's taking place in an area. It's a sign. But some of you still got some open wounds. And it's like going to the hospital and you know you hurt and the doctor's trying to get to the wound, but you keep covering it up because you're not admitting that you hurt. And he says, if you can at least identify what's being hurt and what's been damaged, I can now come in and heal it and now cause a breakthrough to take place in this area just because you finally opened up yourself to the healing power of God. I've been there where God has been knocking. He would knock on the door, knock on the door, knock on the door. And I knew he was trying to get something out of my life. And I knew he was trying to deal something with me, but I kept covering it up. I didn't want to deal with it. You know, you're being worshipped. And we, we try to drown out the voice of God through our talking and stuff. You know, he's telling you to go do something. How great thou art, how great thou I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear what you're telling me. And then we don't like, okay, maybe I'm talking about me. I didn't like quiet places because I would hear clearly from him. And he would tell me to do something I didn't want to do. And then I tried to talk myself out of it. Okay, let me, maybe I'm talking to somebody down the street. Uh, maybe somebody online. I don't know. It's, it, it's just, it's... Because he's trying to bring healing. Because there's a ministry involved that some of you don't realize this ain't just about you and your family. This is about generations to come. This is about a world that's waiting on you to show up, but you can't show up and be fully used by him until certain areas of your life have been dealt with. Amen. All right, all right. Let me stop here. And let me pick up. Because God is a healer. He's a restorer. And there are areas in your life and places in your life that God is saying, I, my main focus today was going to be dealing with the miraculous, the supernatural of God, miraculously healing and delivering and setting free. And I got some scriptures I want to share with you. But one of the things I want you to understand is you got to understand and believe that God can do whatever needs to be done. And let me correct that. He has already provided everything that pertains to life and godliness, but you got to believe God. You and I have to trust God. You got to stay in faith. You got to build yourself up. You got to say, okay, God, I... I don't care how long it's been.
Can, can, I, can I just talk to you real quick? Can I just be straight up? I want you to think now. I'm a minister. I'm going to impart something to you. If God, who created the heavens and the earth, the universe, hear me, he created the sun, he created the moon, he created the stars, he created the solar system, he created the tides in the water, he told the water when to come up and told it when to go back. He created every creature in the earth. He brought the creatures to Adam, and Adam named them. So that means Adam had enough brain power to be so articulate, so skillful to name them. He sent his son Jesus. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also in greater works. Jesus healed the man. Watch this. Most times we don't hear as much preached about healing of the maimed. The maimed are those who've lost body parts. That God could bring back brand new body parts in people who need them. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by this word. So if you don't hear the words, you'll never release your faith for it. So you won't even expect God to give you something you lost. The Bible said about Moses, his eyes were not dim, neither his natural forces abated. Moses was in his 80s as a deliverer. And Moses didn't have the covenant that we have. Y'all got to remember this. God was upon those in the old, but he came to live in those in the new. You hear me? He says, I want to teach you how to tap into what's in you. Okay, I may not expect everybody to get it completely. I got to at least sow it in you so you can start working on it. So instead of just accepting what has started happening, why don't you fight against the aging process? Had you ever considered it? Had you ever considered Yes, I know the outward man perishes, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. But the scripture never said how you had to age. That's up to you. You're the steward of this body. So because we're not just talking about divine healing, we're talking about divine health where you can begin to start putting things in you, speaking life in you, de-stressing, detoxifying, getting yourself ready for longer life. Don't you know you can be better than you currently are right now? Don't you know you can be better than what you currently are right now? See, I'm trying to work with you. I'm trying to work. No, I got to say it. 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 If God raised Lazarus from the, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, after four days, that they said, man, surely the man stinketh. He said, okay, God, I'm glad that you always hear me. Jesus was intentionally late to the tomb of Lazarus. Let me go ahead and show up. When you think everything is gone, it ain't no remedy for it. It ain't no cure for it. This is the final thing. Surely when a person dies, that's it. That's how it always is. We went to the funeral. We put him in the tomb. His body is wrapped up, but Jesus still showed up when it seemed like it was final and over. Glory to God. You better hear me. Uh, no, see, okay, okay, because I'm seeing it while I'm saying it, and he's giving me the image of it. Why do we keep downplaying his power? This is signs and wonders time. We need to see the dead raised. 
We need to see the lame walk. We need to see those who, listen, all robbers, he was in a session, King of Copeland was in a session with all robbers, and he saw there was this baby that a mother brought up her child, and the baby was missing their eyeballs and their eyes, in their eye sockets. All robbers laid hand on this child and prayed, and right before their very eyes, Brother Copeland explained, he said, all of a sudden, there was this white milky substance that began to spin in the eye sockets of the baby. And the eyeballs were formed right there before their very eyes. But somebody had to believe it. We preach from the Bible, but we do, do we believe the God of the Bible? It's time out for low-level stuff. We got to get in full-blown manifestation and power in these last days. Full-blown manifestation. Where everybody is walking in this power. You better hear me. Uh, you better hear me. You, you better be ready to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And not wait for the pastor or the preacher to show up. You got authority. Speak life. Speak life. I don't care if it's been damaged. You can speak to the body part that's been damaged and speak life to it. Yes. Do you mind if I share a little bit? A wife just went to the doctor again. She had been dealing. She got to tell you the whole testimony. She can explain a whole lot better than I can. She had been dealing with this condition. What was the actual name of it? You? Who? Wegner's disease. And she had had these nodules even on her lungs. And I would see this girl get up, I mean, four, three, five in the morning. She would go to the dining room, sit at the table, and make her faith confessions. Every morning. Amen. Every morning. She would research stuff. She would start taking some natural things, trying to figure out, doctor giving her all this crazy medicine. It was doing all crazy stuff to her body. And I'm just talking about, I mean, I mean, it, it blew me away. I was like, the faith. Let me, let, me, let me use another word other than faith. The discipline. To get up every morning, whether she felt like it or not, and would speak and would speak to her body, and would speak to that sickness and disease, and would take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Now, how big were the nodules? I mean, they were like big nodules all in her lungs and stuff. She just went back for another checkup. They have so diminished, it's like now they're just tiny little, but her strength. Yeah, we got to celebrate. Celebrate healing. But watch this. We're celebrating like it's already fully completed. I mean, not one ounce. But watch this. When you're in faith, you celebrate from the beginning like it's already finished and done because that's what Jesus, Jesus said, it is finished, baby. Your healing is finished. Your deliverance is finished. Whatever you need, it's done. It is done. And you got to talk like it's done. You got to act like it's done. But watch this. Not only did she do that spiritual aspect, but then she did the natural thing. She began to find different things and how it would help her lungs and help even when she had this, it was just this chronic cough all the time. It was just how, and then her chest would hurt and things because of, she's flexing the muscles from the coughing and, and all that stuff that goes along with it. And it was just like, sometimes I'm laying in the bed with her and part of me, it was like, okay, and then this is what the Holy Ghost told me one time. He says, I want you to watch this. She needs your help in the spirit. Because she's feeling like she's doing this and believing this all by herself. You need to open up your mouth and speak over her. You need to make sure that you're laying hands constantly over her. You need to make sure that you, de I'm declaring with long life, uh-uh, because -uh, Satan bring it to her mind, all of this stuff, that she ain't going to be here, that somebody else, that all of this stuff. Listen, she's going through this stuff. Some of the stuff, I already knew what she was going through because the Holy Spirit already told me, and then when she told me, it only confirmed what he had already revealed, but Watch this. 
It's time out now. You're going to have to say, watch this. You're going to have to get so mad at that thing that you're coming against. You're going to have to treat it like an enemy. What has been sitting in your body that you become accustomed to and didn't even realize it? You got so comfortable with it, you adjusted, ooh, you adjusted your life to the sickness versus telling the sickness to adjust to the word of God. I mean to the point, stop and think about it. This happened to me one time. I had been dealing with a knee pain or something, uh, inflammation or something. I had gotten so used to limping that even when the inflammation left, I still had to limp. And I remember I was walking one time. It was like, wait a minute. Walk right. And I made myself walk right because I was so used to doing it and didn't even realize I had conditioned myself to stay with the limp. That's a word right there for somebody. You better hear me. You done got so conditioned to that thing that you conform to it and you think God can't do nothing about it. And he says, I've already done everything I, I'm going to do about it. I need you to rise up, man and woman of God, and you to open up your mouth and you to speak and you to declare and say, wait a minute, I am not staying like this. Why? Because that's part of your spiritual development. And God is not going to, oh, that's it. He ain't going to just completely snatch you out of it. He says you got to be disciplined in some cases to come out of it because it's your concern consistency and your discipline that's going to build your strength for the next level I'm taking you to so that you can survive at that next level and flourish at that next level because if you don't learn the lesson now, you can't make it to the next glory I'm trying to take you to. It's, this time, this your training ground. That's what this is about. This is your training. This is your training for your reigning. This is your training for your reigning. This is your training for your reigning, kings and priests. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Man, you better hear me. Yeah, I want you to go to, go to bed thinking, training for reigning. I'm reigning. I'm reigning. I'm ruling and reigning in this life through Christ Jesus. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. This is where you need that coach. This is where you need that trainer that tell you, give me one more rep. You can do it. Give me one more. Give me one more. I can't. Yes, you can. Give me one more. I can't forgive. Yes, you can. The Bible said how many times? 70 times 70. How many times? Keep forgiving. You keep forgiving. Well, you don't know how many times they hurt me, Pastor. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Everybody been hurt. Right. Right. That's good. That's good. No, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be rude. Listen, Jesus was a cold And you crying about it. He said, well, I'm moving on. You coming with me, you're going to stay there and mourn all the rest of your life. That's what he told Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. That's it. He ain't say nothing else about him. He ain't reminisce about Moses. He ain't talk about the times he spent with Moses. He ain't go through none of that. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now it's time for you to take my people over into this promised land. Y'all, I'm telling you, we, 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 I, 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 oh Lord, oh Jesus, I'm 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 gonna stop, I'm gonna stop here. I'm 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 gonna just stop here. It's time to just move. You're gonna have to settle in your heart. Either you're gonna believe God or not. Either you're gonna follow through with it or not. Either you're gonna say I'm gonna make the decision to do it or not. It's just time to do it. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to take communion. This is the first Sunday. First Sunday is we take communion. So for those that are at home, um, you're able to get some elements. We recommend that you do so. Get some juice, bread, crackers, whatever you do. But we're going to believe God. And also, what I wanted to do today, I wanted to make it available I want to pray for even for those dealing with any type of sickness or ailment. But also I want to open up, even now, it could be mental things or it could just be physical things. But what we're going to do is this. The Bible declares, Jesus said it like this. He says, 
as often as you partake of this, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. He said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Jesus took on his body 39 strikes from the cat of nine tails. The cat of nine tails was this whip that had all types of stone, metal, glass. It was like pieces of sharp objects that when a person was whipped, it would dig into their flesh and rip out chunks of flesh. And Jesus took that type of pain. And I know many people saw the movie, The Passion of the Christ, and they, you know, when it came out years ago, and that was just one of the closest depictions, but it was still nothing like what it actually was. The, Jesus was beaten to the point that he was not recognizable. Can you think about that? The person that you love the most being so torn, so bruised, so ripped up that you couldn't even recognize how they looked. But he did it for us. He did it to take your sickness on his body and give you his healing in exchange for it. When you partake of communion, he says this. I want you to do it properly discerning the Lord's body. Properly discerning what it means when you eat of this bread and drink of this cup. When you eat of this bread, you are acknowledging that you are already healed. Right. You are already healed. You are already whole. For those that are on medications, believe to completely come off this upcoming year. Okay, how long you been on it? I'm gonna go back to some more word. I might deal with it Thursday. I want you to be honest. How many of you are currently taking medications for something that you're dealing with physically? Why don't you raise your hand? Okay. Myself included. I'm going to go ahead and put myself there. My number one is like I'm completely coming off any medication that I'm on. Period. Because the medications don't heal the illness or the disease. They just deal with symptoms. And then a lot of times you got side effects from the stuff that you're taking and all of this other stuff. And it's like, wait a minute. God, you already put everything in this earth and in us where healing and health is concerned. So while we keep going for the cheaper, I want the deeper. I'm telling you, I'm coming strong this year with you. I'm, I'm coming strong. You better hear me. Everybody coming up. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Everybody. <laughs> if you don't want to increase, don't come. Oh, see, I'm, yeah, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking strong. I'm talking bold here. Yeah. I'm getting back to some things. Hey, man, when we first started this thing, oh, Lord, you better hear me. I want to create the culture and the environment for your deliverance and freedom. You come in excited, ready to receive, but you're even more excited going out and demonstrating. You hear me? Jesus said, as often as you eat this, I want you to do it in remembrance of me and receive your healing now. Let's eat. After the same man also he took the cup. I love this. This cup, he says, it represents my blood. My blood was shed for the remission of your sins, the taking away of your sins. He says, I no longer hold your sins against you. You are already forgiven. You better hear me, Lord. You better hear me right now. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Dewan, you can't get no more righteous and right with God than you are now. I'm going to say that again. You cannot get any more right with God than you are now. 
Jesus completely delivered and set you free when you got born again and saved. He says, you, all you got to do at this point is just renew your mind to the fact you already free. You already delivered. He already loves you. It's already done. He said, you ain't got to, you ain't got to prove yourself to God. You can't work your own righteousness. It wouldn't be a free gift if you earned it. He says, you are already forgiven. And that's the power you're going to walk in. And that's the message you're going to preach. Is as God called me to preach the righteousness of God, he's called you to preach and to teach. And he says, even this righteousness, you will teach it with fire. Oh, this is going to be a year for you. This upcoming year is going to be a year. But it's going to be your greatest growth year. Your greatest growth. And you will look back and say, God, you were with me the whole way. The whole way. He says, don't you fear nothing. I will perfect everything that concerns you. Mm-hmm. 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 It's okay. This is a house of healing. Of freedom, deliverance, wholeness. Oh, the glory. Father, ooh, Lord, we thank you. <laughs> we rejoice with you. Man, we rejoice together. It is already done in Jesus' name. Let's drink. Mm. Now let's lift up our hands and begin to just thank God. Let's receive. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Glory to your holy name forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give three invitations real quick. Number one, for those that want to get born again, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you know you need to. Number two, for those that be, you've gotten born again and you know it, but you've been lacking power. I'm going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Then thirdly, for you to connect with this ministry. If this is the place that God is calling you to connect to, it's time to make the decision and the choice. There is something about commitment. Number one, commitment to God. Number two, commitment to where he's called you to be. See, sometimes we don't understand where God guides, he provides. And where he calls you, he's equipped you. He told Elijah, I want you to go to a certain brook and there will I sustain thee. And he called the ravens to supernaturally bring him food to the place he told him to be at. It's where God calls you. It's where, see, some people try to find a church based off of the job they got. And God said, uh, oh, find a place I called you to connect to and the job will come. We put things in reverse. Obey and get hooked up. I, I, I want to deal with connection and the power of connection. This is why, too, more than ever, man, I'm going after God. I mean, I'm just for me personally. This is just my personal, my personal relationship with him. Because I understand whatever's on the head flows to the body. And I want to position myself for optimum power to manifest. I, I, I don't want nothing to be messed up in the flow. You hear me? Because I want to see, I want to see y'all do great exploits. When y'all shine, it does my heart great. Now, I'm going to deal with this for those watching online as well. As every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I want y'all, we're going to pray with somebody, maybe somebody online that just showed up. It's like, you know what? I never gave my life to the Lord, but I want to today. I want you to repeat this prayer after me, along with everyone else. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. 
I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, for those, now I want you to pray this prayer. For those that are born again, and you want to receive the Holy Spirit to come and to live and to dwell in you. The Bible says he's going to help you. He's the third person of the Godhead. You have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says these three are one. The Holy Spirit, he, he's the one with us in the earth today. On the day of Pentecost, he invaded the atmosphere. And they heard him as a sound of a rushing mighty wind at that time because he entered in. But now he's here with the church in the earth to empower us, to strengthen us, to show us things to come, to be a counselor to us, to help breathe on the word of God, to bring revelation and insight of the scriptures. He's here to strengthen us. He'll show you stuff, man, and I'm telling you, I don't care how many times he does things with me and through me, I never get bored. I never, it, it never becomes dull. I love him. Now, for those who haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, I want you to pray this prayer right now. Just real simple. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues. As you give me the utterance, in Jesus' name, amen. I want us, come on, let's lift up our hands. Let's begin to just pray in the spirit. Go rabba se te lo bo fraba la ba. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Le roba sa kande re bo se le le bo sa ka. Mata la be she te lo bo koma. Le grisi alaba do bo reba de si. Brivrando kum brandandes e de kum brasa taraba. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this is what I want you to do. Every day I want you to pray. Spend time praying in the spirit. Listen, there'll be times where your tongue will change. The more you begin to pray, it's a heavenly language. You can be purposeful in how you pray. Just like I'm talking to you now in English and my understanding, my natural dialect, I can now go in the spirit. Now that's different than Tongues with interpretation. Some people have tried to mix the two together. No, the simple gift of tongues where you can pray in the spirit anytime you want to. You don't have to be led by the spirit to pray. Now he will lead you to pray and to do things, but you can do it in and of your own will. To, and watch this. The Bible says when you pray like this, you charge yourself up like a battery. You charge yourself up. Whenever you deplete, listen, you won't go, some of y'all won't go a day without charging your phone up a couple of times. Build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Watch what begins to happen. When you pray in the Spirit, you pray about stuff that you're, is bypassing your understanding. And stuff is manifesting that you didn't even realize you prayed out. So you got to be open to how the Holy Spirit even does things, how God manifests things. You may try to do it one way, and he said, no, I'm going to do it this way. This is why you got to be led by him. Amen. For those that desire to become a member or partner with this ministry, you can simply just contact us. Um, you can send us an email at connect at spiritofire.us. You can send us a message um, on our, you can DM us, I don't care, just, just get to us. We'll have somebody from the Connect team get with you and we'll help you to make that. Uh, and we want to help you as, listen, this is one thing, membership has its privileges. There is something about making a commitment People who are leery of making commitments will always walk unstable. It's something about it. You know God is doing it. Some of you, there have been people who knew God told them to connect, but they just struggle with it. For whatever reason, obey. He 
still get everything else done. Listen, we're in the process of totally revamping, rebranding, rebuilding this ministry. I'm so excited about what God is doing. I'm telling you, listen, I'm going to have a, I'm here to do a meeting and I want everybody to be a part of it so I can start imparting, training, directing. This, 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 for some who knew us in the beginning and how we used to function and flow, oh, it ain't going to be, oh man, we're going to blow that out the water. Dang, dang, nothing. That ain't nothing to compare with the glory that's to be revealed. There's much to be done. Amen. There's much work to be done. There are many to be trained and developed and released in the earth to fulfill their call and purpose. And we're going to do our part to make it to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. I want to hear well done. Amen. I don't know about y'all. I want to hear well done, our good and faithful servant. I don't want to be, I go up, he was like, I don't know what you're going to say other than well done. I definitely don't want to hear no depart from me. A work of iniquity. Heck no. I ain't worrying about that, but I'm like, Lord. Just imagine, he says, why did you quit? Why did you stop? You were right there. Look what happened with Joseph. Joseph was in jail. He interpreted the dreams of the people that was in jail with him. They came out of jail. He says, don't forget me. Tell the Pharaoh about me. Two years passed. While he was still in jail, I know stuff had to be going on in his mind. He had already been sold into slavery. His brother sold him into slavery. Potiphar's wife lied on him. That's how he ended up in prison. Now he in prison, he was running the prison. This is the funny thing. While he was going through all he was going through, he was still functioning in his gifting and anointing. He was still, God was still using him at every stage in life. But watch this. He was two years away from getting out and connecting with Pharaoh, but didn't know it. He was one year away from connecting with Pharaoh and didn't know it. He was three months away but didn't know it from getting ready to walk in his destiny and purpose. He was two weeks away. And what if he would have quit? What if he would have killed himself in prison? What if depression would have set in? And he says, you know what? Forget this thing. God don't love me. He showed me this dream. He showed everybody bowing down before me. I'm quitting on God. God don't love me. Two days away. And he's still holding on. Two hours away before the God knocks on the door and says, the Pharaoh has need of you. What if he would have quit right then? Then the opportunity showed up. And he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream and gave him wisdom to know what to do. And Pharaoh, I'm going to put you second in command. Nobody knew what the Pharaoh had except Joseph. He was second in command of the whole nation. What if he would have quit while he was in prison? What prison have you been in? And God is saying, you're about to walk in destiny and you don't even realize it. Don't you quit. It's been years for some. It's been years Family deliverance. It's been years. Ooh, you about to see it. You, man, you about to see it. Y'all ready? Y'all, y'all, y'all receiving this? Y'all, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. y'all ain't gonna receive it. I'll shut up. Mm. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. So for those that feel as though you're supposed to connect, just make the decision today. For those that are in person, if you need to give with one of us after the end, you can do so. You can log on and connect at spiritofire.us. Connect at spiritofire.us. You can email those online, or you can send and uh, DM us on our social media platforms, and we'll have somebody from our Connect team to get with you. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. Um, we're going to honor God in our giving. If you need an envelope, 
Do we have the envelopes with us today? We got, we got. You need an envelope, you can raise your hand for those. For those that want to sew from the digital platforms, you can sew on Cash App, Venmo. You can go, uh, for those online, there's a QR code that's coming up. You can scan that code. It'll take you to a secure uh, page on our website where you can sew. Uh, whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. Obey. And so expect it. God loves a cheerful giver. We teach you the word on giving. We teach you how to give. But now it's up to you. He doesn't want you to do it under compulsion of necessity because he loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in their giving. But we better expect now. Listen, we want to be intentional about our giving. He says, as a man purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity. But I like he says this, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. In other words, there's two ways to look at that. In amount and frequency. Whether you sow a little in comparison to what you have. Now, a person who only has $5, $2 is a significant seed in comparison to what you have. Now, the person who got $2 million, $2 is like, okay, really? Really? You, you ain't going to miss that whatsoever. That's why the widow woman, she gave two mites, but she gave up all that she had. And Jesus said she gave more than anybody else. Everybody else gave out of their abundance, but this woman gave out of her need, her want. As you sow, ask God, what is it that you're believing for? Target that seed. I'm believing for this. I want this to open up. Whatever it is, obey the Spirit of God. Amen. At this time, as you're sowing, I'm going to dismiss. But I did tell you I'd pray for those, anybody that wanted prayer for anything that you're dealing with, Sickness or disease, whether it's physical, mental, I don't care what it is. Even as you're sowing, I want to go ahead and take this opportunity um, due to time constraints. Um, you can come in, serve the people. Is there anyone here that desires healing? Even anyone online, um, you can put it, log in the comment section, and then we'll have somebody uh, to let me know what it is, and we can pray for them uh, real quick, real quick if you're doing it. So if there's anybody that desires prayer, at this time, you don't have to, no pressure, no nothing. If you just want me to pray for you, I will. If not, that's, that's fine. Just, you come on up. Just real quick. Let's just stretch our hands. We're in agreement. Now, in the name of Jesus, we come against sickness and disease. We come against mental pressures. We come against everything that would try to attack this body. We take authority over it. The Bible declares that these signs follow them that believe. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Now at the point of contact, I want you to release your faith. When I lay hands on you, I want you to release your faith to receive your healing. In Jesus' name, be healed now. In Jesus' name, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I want you to say this, say, in Jesus' name, I believe I receive my healing and my wholeness now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak over this brother. I speak complete healing over his life, over his body. I declare, is, what is in particular? Is anything in particular? Okay. Okay. That's what I was kind of sensing to, but I just want to make sure I'm on track. In the name of Jesus, this is going to be a twofold thing. I'm going to lay hands on you, but I'm also teach you how to walk in it and to stay free from it. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over what's been attacking him. I take authority. You foul spirit that's been there, de bros e cando, that he's not good enough, that he's not worthy enough, and all that. I take authority over that in Jesus' name. You are alive from the pit of hell. You are alive from the pit of hell. And so I speak the peace that passes all understanding, that it guards his heart and mind, and that, Father, he begins to learn and understand and comprehend how to walk in this peace and to walk in this victory how to know how to even mentally compartmentalize and begin to separate things and organize things. It's, just, it's like a bunch of clutter. It's a bunch of clutter, a bunch of chaos has been going on mentally. 
but God is, it, it, and some of it is structure. Some of it is discipline, order, and daily regimentation. That's going to assist and that's going to help. The Bible says it like this. How you cast down, you can cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The way you cast down imaginations is you capture thoughts with words. So if, if something, a thought is coming to your mind, you don't fight a thought with a thought. You fight it with words. So do it just like this. I want you to count in your head to 10. Ready, go. Now, no, just in your head, not out your mouth, but in your head. Ready, go. Now say hallelujah out your mouth. What happened to the count? It stopped because you captured it. You interrupted it versus sitting there and just, and just dwelling. I know how that is. Listen, trust me, I know all that. I know how that is. And then you can have stress and headaches and tension and all that kind of stuff. And then what begins to happen now is, y'all just give me one second, please. I got to minister to this situation here. And what begins to happen is, when people start interacting, that's where a lot of that anger begins to rise up because you're trying to control emotions and nobody properly taught you how to control your emotions and how to weather and navigate, even as a man, emotionally. Because so many times we've been taught how to just suck it up, you know, don't cry, real, uh, suck it up, you don't cry, you, you be tough. But nobody told you how to mourn, how to grieve, how to hurt. And to say, okay, I'm hurting and how to acknowledge the hurt. I acknowledge that I'm hurt. But now this is what I need to do to remedy that. This is why God tells us and teaches us how to walk in love. See, love is ever ready to believe the best of a person. It's ever ready. So yes, you give people the benefit of the doubt, but if they continue to show you a pattern of character, then you deal with them and understand, but you still gotta learn how not to hold it in you. Because then it, now it turns into bitterness and hardness of heart. Then you start distrusting people. And then when God's trying to move you into a direction, there are walls that you've been coming up against because you never dealt with their past hurt and past disappointment. So you're always leery, suspect. You watch. And yes, you're supposed to discern and watch and be mindful. And I just, I'm not talking about being naive. But so many times God can bring relationships in your life that you don't fully benefit from and Satan tries to remove you from because he knows if he ever gets properly connected to this source of power that's abiding in him, my days of ruling him are over. You hear me? You're a strong man physically, but it's almost like I see this kid in you. And you've been looking for acceptance and affirmation. I affirm you this day, man. You are more, you are enough. You hear me? You don't have to prove yourself a man to anybody. God created you. He called you before you were formed in your mama's womb. He said, I had already set aside a plan and a path for you. And I put in you everything you would need to fulfill it. You are enough. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody else any longer. You hurt easy, but you love hard. And people who normally love hard hurt hard. When, when it's not reciprocated, it, it's devastating at times. I know. I'm a dude like that by nature, loyal cat. But I had to begin to grow in certain things. How to be healed and how to deal with people, but not be bitter in the process of past hurts and failures. I know. I know it. I can smell it on people. Because I've been there. See, when you do it and you've done it, you know it when you see it. But now there's a surrender that's coming. There's a freedom in worshiping me that's coming to your life, says the Lord. Just lift up your hands. Let it go. Let it go. And I'm going to guide you. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Just let it go. Don't worry about it. Uh-huh. I know, yeah, you fighting it right now. I can see it all in you. It's, it's a fight that's going on. But uh, this day, this is your receiving day. This is your receiving day. This is your receiving day. How can I, God? How can I? By an act of your faith and will. Mm-hmm. 
by an act of your faith and will. That's how you do it. You choose to do it. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. He commanded his soul to bless God. You command your soul to bless the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's a little lighter now. Uh-huh. But we still digging. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. But out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Yeah. 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 You open up your mouth and speak. You declare and decree your freedom. You declare and decree. See, that's what God is teaching you. It's not trusting and depending on men to do it. He said, it's in you. The greater one is in you. <laughs> Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's coming. I, yeah, whoo, glory. Yeah, Christ. Y'all can sense it. Some of y'all can sense it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Huh? You've been seeking. You've been seeking here and seeking there and seeking there. You've been all over the place. It's time for stableness, stability. It's time to be stable. That's all I can say now until there's something else happening, and then I'll, I'll deal with the rest later. All is well, son. All is well. All is well. You have a safe place to land. Glory to God. Bresh the God. Jesus. Is well with you. The blessing. The blessing. Well, glory to God. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet so we can be dismissed. Somebody once said, if we don't go, we can't come back. Amen. Announcements. I'm sorry. We have Pastor Rock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Rock has some announcements real quick, and we'll dismiss right after that. I'll let her come forward. Let's give her a hand clap, Pastor Rock. Here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's real quick, real quick. We are in the process of doing um, Can we bring toys up a little bit? for tots. And so if you desire to bring, um, purchase a toy, it's from zero to 18 years old, 17 years old, please do so and just um, bring it on Sunday so that we can um, gather all the toys we have. Right now, about 40 or 50 families who have reached out to us um, for toys, for help with toys. So we're looking for help with that. Um, a team of people that will come in and volunteer. We have one day that we never know when the Marine Corps is gonna call us. Normally it's like doing our anniversary, which is the 19th. So I'm thinking that they're gonna call us on the 17th. If anybody has philanthropy days, um, we would need your help on that day to put, and that's a Friday. I believe that's the 16th of December. Mm -hmm. Or we could do it on a Saturday. Time is going to be um, up to the volunteers because they normally call us early in the morning and we go get a truck and we go to the Marine Corps, pick up the toys, and then we put them all together. Okay? So if you can help with that, we appreciate it. Um, and I think that's it. That, that's pretty much the most pressing right now is the Toys for Tots. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay. Praise God. Um, let's go ahead and be dismissed. Father, we just thank you as we leave this place, but never your presence, that the angels of God are encamped round about us to keep us, to protect us in all our ways, that no evil plague will come nigh our dwelling, nothing evil shall happen unto us. We bless you, we thank you for it. With long life, you satisfy us and show us your salvation. We live long and strong in Jesus' name. We bless you, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you all. Go in peace. Have a wonderful time. Those that are on online, enjoy your day. God bless you.